Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shweta Anand and welcome back to my channel Simplified Dentistry. In today's video, let's have a look on dental caries and its classification. So dental caries, also known as tooth decay or cavities, is a dental condition characterized by the demineralization and destruction of the hard tissues of the teeth. It is a bacterial infection caused by the interaction of bacteria in dental plug with sugars and carbohydrates from the food we eat. To understand dental caries, it is important to know the structure of a tooth. A tooth is composed of three main layers, enamel, dentine and pulp. So the outermost layer that is enamel is the hardest substance in the human body and protects the underlying layers. Dentine lies beneath the enamel and is softer than enamel but still sturdy. The pulp located in the innermost part of the tooth contains nerves and blood vessels. When we consume sugary or carbohydrate rich foods, bacteria in our mouth break down these substances and produce acids as byproducts. These acids along with the bacteria form a sticky film called plug that adheres to the teeth. The acids attack the enamel causing it to lose minerals and weaken it. Over time, the enamel structure becomes compromised and small holes or openings known as cavities develop. If left untreated, the decay can progress deeper into the tooth, reaching the dentine and eventually the pulp. At this stage, the tooth becomes more sensitive and painful as the nerves in the pulp are affected. In severe cases, the infection can lead to abscess formation or tooth loss. So we can say that dental caries is a dental condition caused by bacterial infection and the breakdown of tooth structure leading to cavities and potential tooth damage if left untreated. So dental caries can be defined as a microbiological disease of the hard structure of teeth which results in localized demineralization of the inorganic portion and destruction of the organic substance of the tooth. It can be classified based on various factors including the location, extent, rate of progression, age pattern, pathway of progression and the surfaces involved. So now let's have a look on the classifications of dental caries in detail. First one is classification of dental caries according to its location. So according to location, caries can be either primary or secondary. Secondary caries is also known as recurrent caries. So the primary caries is the original caries lesion in the tooth and depending upon its location, it is again classified into four types. First is pit and fissure caries. Second is smooth surface caries. Third is root surface caries. And fourth is residual caries. The caries beginning in the pits and fissures of teeth is referred to as the pit and fissure caries. Pit and fissures are those areas of the teeth where there is imperfect fusion of developmental enamel loads and because of the incomplete fusion of enamel, these areas are susceptible to food impaction and hence caries occurs. Now the second one is smooth surface caries. It does not begin in the pits and fissures but on relatively smooth surfaces of the tooth that have been covered with plaque for quite some time. Unlike pit and fissure caries, it initially involves a larger area of enamel on its outer surface. Third is root surface caries. It is also referred to as senile caries and begins on the roots of the teeth that have been exposed to the oral environment and covered with plaque for quite some time. The progression of this type of caries is rapid and hence should be detected and checked in time. Fourth is residual caries. Caries that remains after the cavity preparation has been completed is referred to as residual caries, which may have been left behind either intentionally by the operator or by accident. Now let's know about secondary caries, which is also referred to as recurrent caries. So the secondary caries begins around or beneath the restoration. This condition usually indicates that micro leakage is present along with other conditions leading to caries development. 
So do you know what is micro leakage? Micro leakage is the clinically undetectable passage of bacteria, fluids, molecules or ions between tooth and the restoration or the filling material and it is caused due to poor adaptation between the restorative material and the original tooth structure. Now let's move on to the second classification which is according to amount of tooth involvement or the extent of caries. So according to this classification, caries can be either incipient or advanced. Incipient caries is also known as white spot lesion and it is reversible. It is also referred to as initial caries as it is the first evidence of caries activity in the enamel. On smooth surface enamel, the lesion appears white when air dried and seems to disappear when wet. Second is advanced caries which is also known as cavitated caries and is irreversible. The caries that has progressed to dentino enamel junction and is no longer reversible is called advanced caries. When the overlying enamel breaks down, the lesion is known as cavitated caries. At this stage, the lesion cannot be remineralized and requires cavity preparation and restoration for treatment. Third classification is according to the rate of progression that is according to the speed of the caries. So according to this classification, caries can be either acute or chronic. Acute caries often termed rampant caries refers to disease that rapidly damages the tooth. It is usually in the form of numerous soft light colored lesion in a mouth and is infectious. Second one is chronic caries. So the chronic caries is slow or it may be arrested following several active phases. The slow rate results from periods when demineralized tooth structure is almost remineralized. The slow rate of caries allows time for extrinsic pigmentation and so they are darkened in color. So the arrested enamel lesion is dark brown to black in color and is hard. These lesions may be present in only few locations in the mouth and as a result of fluoride may be more caries resistant than the contagious unaffected enamel. Next classification is according to the age pattern. So according to age, caries can be nursing bottle caries, adolescent caries or geriatric caries. Nursing bottle caries occur in early infancy period when the babies bottle feed and they develop caries. It is usually developed on the maxillary incisors. The prolonged breastfeeding especially at night can result in such caries and the addition of sweetener to milk etc can enhance the caries attack. Second is adolescent caries. Acute caries attack is usually seen at the 4 to 8 years of age. Caries attack after this period is usually characterized as adolescent caries. Third is geriatric caries. So the geriatric caries are the caries which occur in older adults around age of 50 or so is referred to as geriatric caries. Usually caries of cementum falls under this category. Next classification is according to the pathway of progression of caries or the direction of caries. So according to this classification, caries can be of two types. Either it can be a backward caries or a forward caries. When the spread of caries along the dentino enamel junction exceeds the caries in the contagious enamel, caries extend into the enamel from the junction and is termed as backward caries since the spread of caries here is in backward direction. Forward caries is said to be present whenever the caries in enamel is larger or at least the same size as that in the dentine. It spreads in forward direction from enamel to dentine. Next is G.B. Black's classification of dental caries and according to this classification, dental caries is of six types. Class 1 caries, Class 2 caries, class 3 caries, class 4 caries, class 5 
एंड क्लास सिक्स केरीज क्लास वन केरीज इज द केरीज अफेक्टिंग फिट्स एंड फिजर्स ऑन ऑक्लूजल थर्ड ऑफ मोलर्स एंड प्री मोलर्स ऑक्लूजल टू थर्ड ऑफ मोलर्स एंड प्री मोलर्स एंड द लिंगुअल पार्ट ऑफ एंटीरियर थे सो क्लास वन केरीज इज बेसिकली सीन ऑन दूजल और द लिंगुअल सर्फेस That is occlusal surface of the posterior and the lingual surface of the anterior. Class two caries are the caries affecting proximal surface of the molars and premolars. So class two basically involves the proximal surface of the posterior teeth. Class three caries is the caries affecting proximal surface of central incisor, lateral incisor, and cuspids. So class three caries are the caries which affect the proximal surface of anterior teeth. Now class four caries are the caries affecting proximal, including the incisal edges of anterior teeth. So class four caries is same as class three. It's just that the incisal edges are also included. So in class three, it was only the proximal surface of the anterior teeth, but in class four. proximal surface along with the incisal edges of the anterior teeth are included class 5 caries is the caries affecting gingival one third of facial or lingual surfaces of the anterior or posterior teeth so class 5 basically includes the gingival third area and the class 6 caries was never described by black and was later added by simon it includes caries affecting cusp tips of molars premolars and cuspids so class 6 caries usually includes the cusp tips now next is the graham mounds classification this classification is based on the fact that there are only three surfaces of the crown of a tooth that can be subjected to caries attack this classification also takes into consideration the size of the lesion thus it is a combination of the site and the stage of the defect so the three sites of caries lesion are site 1 pits fissures and enamel defect on the occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth or smooth surfaces so site 1 basically includes the pits and fissures site 2 is the approximal enamel immediately below areas in contact with adjacent teeth So site two includes the contact areas between two teeth, and site three includes the cervical one third of the crown or following gingival recession on exposed tooth. So site three is basically the cervical area. Now let's have a look on the four sizes of caries lesion, and these are size one is the minimal involvement of dentine just beyond treatment by remineralization alone. Size two is moderate involvement of dentine size 3 is when the cavity is enlarged beyond moderate involvement and size 4 is extensive caries where bulk loss of tooth structure has already occurred these are the sizes minimal moderate enlarged and extensive which are mentioned as 1 2 3 and 4 so in this way a table is made where site is mentioned on one side and size on the other the combined value of both the site as well as size tells us about the site of caries lesion and its stage of defect that is the defect is of what size so for example if it is 1.1 it indicates that it is a pit and fissure caries with minimal involvement of the dentine and if it is 3.2 then it indicates that caries is present in the cervical area with moderate involvement of the dentine another classification is based on the surfaces involved and according to this classification caries can be either mesial distal or buccal so mesial caries is the caries on the tooth surface that is directed towards the median plane of the dental arch distal caries is the loss of tooth structure on the tooth surface that is directed away from the median plane of the dental arch that is it is present on the distal surface and the buccal caries is the caries beginning with dk on the buccal surface of a tooth 
Next classification is according to the number of surfaces involved and it can be either simple carries, compound carries or complex carries. So, so simple carries means carries involve only one surface. Compound carries means carries involve two surfaces and, and complex carries means carries involve three or more surfaces. So this was all about the classification of dental caries. Hope you find this video useful. And for more such contents, please subscribe to the channel Simplified Dentistry.